Hello, everybody. Welcome to the lunch table. My name is Evan. Today, I'm joined with Nick, and today we're going to be continuing our off-season breakdown series. But this time, we're diving into the AFC East, which is the Bills, Dolphins, Jets, and Patriots. Um, but before we begin, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy these types of videos, um, and to follow along with us as we go throughout the off season, and to follow us on Instagram and TikTok at lunchtable.takes. And without further ado, we'll dive right into it. First team we'll hit today will be the Buffalo Bills. So the Bills went 11-6, and six, won the AFC East, but lost in the divisional rounds. The Chiefs, uh, Nick, what do you kind of recap their season and give a grade? Um, yeah, they, they went out, like you alluded to, they went 11-6, lost to Kansas City in the divisional round. Um, they kind of started out the first three months of the year kind of off and on. They were, uh, I think, 500 when they lost to the Broncos on Monday Night Football, and then they kind of just put a win streak together towards the end of the year to win the AFC East. Um, and then they ran into Kansas City again, um, and Patrick Mahomes did what Patrick Mahomes does and just beat a team that he probably should not have, but he's just that good. Um, and... It raised a lot of questions. It raised a lot of questions for me where it was like, if you're not going to beat Kansas City this year, when are you going to beat them? Because they had not really a whole lot of offensive talent outside of Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes for a lot of the year until the postseason came around. Um, So uh, Josh Allen played great in the postseason. Once again, that's pretty much a given at this point. Um, but there are a lot of questions in regards to what they need to do to get over that hump. Um, if I had to give them a grade on their season, um, I want, I want to be a tough grader, but I also want to be a fair grader. Um, so I think I would give them a C plus in terms of their grade on this year. They did win the division, but they ultimately ended this season the exact same spot they've ended the last few years um and i just i don't think that's what the bills front office and their fans were expecting coming into this year with josh allen so i'd give them a c plus grade there yeah i mean they got the two seed this year they were 11 and 6 but again they ran into Mahomes, and um obviously they lost couldn't couldn't get through him in a game that nick you alluded to they should have probably won because they were just the better team. But, um, but yeah, it was kind of an up and down season for them. Like you talked about, there were 500 before that Broncos game and they kind of got hot towards the end of the season. So, um, yeah, they weren't really as dominant as people really thought they were going to be. People thought that they were going to be like a top team in the AFC, which I mean, they ended up getting the two seed, but, they got the two seed after like the last week, right? Yeah, they if they lost to Miami week eighteen, they would have missed the playoffs in its entirety. Yeah, yeah. so they weren't like a secure two seed, like they were. They like, just snuck in there, but, but yeah, I would probably grade them probably a B minus. Um, I mean, still made the playoffs, which is good, which you should expect with this type of caliber team, but you would hope that you could get a little bit farther than the division. And I feel like the way that they lost that game, like you said, Nick, raised a lot of questions for me as well. Um, <clears throat> which which is a reason why this is a big offseason for them. It's a huge offseason. But the, unfortunately, the unfortunately for them, they are $41.2 million over the cap, and which is dead last in the NFL. Um their key free agents are Gabe Davis, Micah Hyde, and Daquan Jones. Their free agency needs are wide receiver, edge, and safety. They hold the 28th pick. And, yeah. Um, Nick, who do you think they should keep and or cut? Um, yeah, looking at their um, free agents, it seems like their entire defensive line is just an unrestricted free agent. This mm-hmm. offseason. And like you alluded to with the the $42 million over the cap being dead last in the NFL, um, they're not going to be able to go out and 
get a bunch of free agents. Um, at least, like, elite free agents, because they just don't have the money. Um, so I think that they... Ha- if there's a guy that they have to reside, I think it is Daquan Jones, just because their defensive line might be so depleted if they do not re-sign him. Yeah, I- I'd say Daquan Jones as well, because he, like you said, th- their entire defensive line basically are in- are re- free agents this year. Daquan Jones, AJ Epineza, and Lennon Floyd. So the only one that's still there is Ed Oliver, and so. Um, yeah, you definitely need to get that defensive line back. Um, I think getting um, a guy like Leonard Floyd could be good as well because he um, he has Super Bowl experience. He was on that Rams team. Um, he is a little bit on the older side, but he's still a, he's still a pretty good player. Um, and I think that's another one that they should target to keep to bring back. And you can also get him back for a fairly cheap. He's not going to be asking for like top dollar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I think somebody that they could consider cutting, um, I think you might have to read the writing on the wall and you might have to let go of Trey White. I think Trey White, he's a, he's a great corner when he's healthy. Emphasis on when he's healthy. Um, the last two, three years, he hasn't been healthy. And so he's one of those guys where if you're paying him a lot of money for him to not be on the field come playoff time when you need him. It's kind of one of those that it might be the grass might be greener on the other side. Once you get rid of them and try to try to get some more cap space Um, as much as it hurts to lose a great player like him, he's um, yeah, just always hurt. And he is 29. So he's getting up there in age as well. So I think that could be one that they could potentially move on from and save a little bit of money. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, I, I, I agree with all that. Tredavious White just can't stay healthy when it matters the most. Um, and at some point, you just have to kind of cut your losses with a guy that takes up as much cap room as Tredavious White um, mm-hmm. in terms of just their situation that they're currently in. Um, I also, you didn't mention safety as a team need, but they're also losing Taylor Rapp in free agency yeah, as well. True. So both of their starting safeties are uh, going to be free agents and like they don't have the room to sign them. So I think safety needs to be addressed in the off season yeah. as well as best they can. Yeah, I would agree. Cause yeah, I mean, Hyde's another one like Trey White where he's great when he's on the field, but he hasn't been on the field lately. Yeah. And then Taylor Rapp, yeah, losing him. So yeah, safety is definitely, definitely what they could, what they need to target. Yeah. <laughs> All right, who do you think they should bring in from free agency? Um, well, like you alluded to, they're almost $42 million um, negative in the cap. So the free agency aspect is going to have to be uh, kind of bargain, guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't, I don't have, like, a star guy because they just can't sign him, but I think a guy like Donovan Peoples-Jones – um, would be really good adding into their wide receiver depth. I'm not quite sure that he would immediately be a solid wide receiver too. Like he'd immediately replace the production of Gabe Davis, mm-hmm. but he's been serviceable for Cleveland the past few years. Um, so if they want to address the wide receiver aspect in free agency, I think Donovan Peoples Jones is a great target. You can get him for a couple million a year. Um, and he's he's proven to put up decent numbers in Cleveland. So if I were to Target a guy, be him. Yeah, I, I like Donovan Peoples Jones. Yeah, it kind of it's it's going to be tough to get a guy that gives you Gabe Davis's production with the salary cap. But like you said earlier, I feel like Gabe Davis's production is enough to warrant paying him as much as he's going to want. So it's one of those things where you know it's kind of a tough situation. Um, but I have another receiver on the cheaper side. Um, I mentioned right after they lost when we talked about it that I think their big their biggest need is a jump ball physical wide receiver to complement Stephon Diggs, and I think one that you could get um, on the cheap end would be DJ Chark from the Panthers. Um, he's not and he's not going to wow you. He's not a superstar, 
by any mean, but 6'3", 200. He had 525 yards, five touchdowns last year. Um, I think he's one of those guys where you can definitely get him cheap and with Josh Allen might be able to elevate his game a little bit more. Um, he's not going to be this massive game changer, but he he might, like you said, with the negative $42 million in cap, might be one of your only options. So I think DJ Chark being a big physical receiver at 27, um, he's, I think he still could have a little bit of potential, and I think Josh Allen and that offense could could help him out a little bit. Because, I mean, when he was in Jacksonville that his second year, I mean, he had 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns. So he has had productive seasons, but recently he really just hasn't gotten the chance. Um, and obviously he was with the Panthers, who were the worst team in the league this year. So yeah, they were, they were I, pretty abysmal. Yeah. So I think taking a flyer on him could be a nice bargain deal. Yeah, I think they're going to have to – I think we're, we're going to get to it in a second, but they're going to have to address their pressing needs in the draft yeah. this year because they just – they can't sign anyone until they get this cap situation under control. Yeah. Um, I have one more guy that I would like to highlight. I think, um, like we said, a lot of their offensive – or defensive linemen, excuse me, are hitting free agency. And so if they can't bring back – all of those guys. I think somebody they could target that might take lower money would be Carl Lawson from the Jets. Um, and the, really the main reason being why he would take less money is because he he came off of – he only played in six games this past year. And the year before, he came off of a – I think a torn ACL. And so – he his production has drastically gone down since that torn ACL, and so I think, um, I mean, he's only twenty eight, and before the, his ACL, I mean, he had seven sacks, um, thirty three tackles, which is which is pretty pretty solid for an edge rusher of his caliber, and so I think he could be a guy that you could take a flyer on and hope that he pays off if you do end up losing Floyd or Ebenezer. Yeah, for sure. And I think you could get him for cheaper than you might think just due to his lack of production. And yeah, I just, history. I just don't know if he's going to want to leave the Jets. Yeah. Truthfully. That's the big thing. Yeah. Because I think, well, I mean, we'll get to it in a minute, but I mean, the, he's obviously a key free agent for the Jets. Um, so we'll mm-hmm. see if they re sign him. Yeah. Um,. Yeah, you alluded to it just a minute ago. Their biggest needs are going to be in the draft, and they hold pick 28. So who are you eyeing for them to draft there at 28? Um, at 28, um, there's a few guys. I think that addressing – I hate to like sound like a broken clock, um, but I hate – I think that if they're going to address the wide receiver aspect in the draft um, – a guy like Troy Franklin would be fantastic for them because he's also a big 50-50 guy that can complement Stephon Diggs. You can get him on a rookie deal. Um, and if you watched Oregon this year, he would just be open whenever Bo Nix needed a big play. He was phenomenal for them this season. Um, I think he would complement Stephon Diggs in this Bills offense super well. Um, and he should be available around that range. A lot of guys have him going late first round. Um, so if I were to take a guy, I'd be, be Troy Franklin. I think he's fantastic. Yeah, no, Troy Franklin's definitely a guy that I've seen in a lot of mocks there in the low 20s, um, early 30s. That Yeah, definitely somebody that could come in and make an impact. Um, like you said, he was phenomenal at Oregon. He's, what is he, 6'2"? 6'3". 6'3", yeah, so he's he's a bigger guy, um, and yeah, I mean, he he definitely could be somebody that you could get, which would be kind of a steal for them, honestly. But it, what's nice for the Bills, which they kind of lucked out on, is this wide receiver class is super deep. Yeah. Like, there's so many guys, like, there's going to be guys that you can get at the top end of the second round that would, that you would, in other years, would probably be first round picks. Um, and so them at 28, they're kind of, they're kind of lucky that this is a deep receiver class. So they have a lot of options. And I think one of those options who 
may or may not be there after um, his combine performance, but I think could could still be there is um, A.D. Mitchell from Texas. Um, when you talk about jump ball receivers, he's he's the definition of of one of those. I mean, he played at Georgia and uh, Texas this past year, um, and he was one of Quinn Ewers' biggest weapons, having 845 yards, 11 touchdowns. But he's 6'4", 196. Um, and if you watch the combine, he was probably one of the biggest risers Forfeit. from the combine. Uh, around a four three five forty with a one point five four split, forty inch vertical, eleven inch broad jump. Like he kind of just tested insane. Like and so he really raised his draft stock. And you think of somebody that is that athletic and that big that can just go get a ball when you need to. He obviously has downfield speed. Um, he's and he's a guy that's big enough to get those 50 50 balls one on on one on one situation so i think that would be a perfect pick for um the bills to get and i think he could be as close as you could get to a gabe davis replacement um and i think yeah i think if you're the bills and he's sitting there at, at 28 i think that would be uh you would be loving that for sure yeah i i have uh ab mitchell on here as well um, I just don't think he's going to be available at 28 yeah. because of how well he tested at the combine. Um, yeah. That would be an ideal scenario for all Bills fans. Because, um, I mean, if you even just – I wa- I didn't tune into, a, like, all of Texas's games this year, but I watched that game against Washington. He almost single-handedly brought them back that last five minutes of that game. Um, A.D. Mm-hmm. Mitchell is a freak. He's exactly what Buffalo needs. Um, I think that on the defensive side of the thing, on the defensive side of the ball, um, I think a guy like Chris Jenkins, day two from Michigan, could really help their D-line um, a lot. He's 6'3", 300, fantastic run stopper. Um, didn't have as great of a production this past year, but Michigan was just so loaded on the defensive mm-hmm. side of the ball that it kind of makes sense. But – um, 37 tackles, two and a half sacks, a fumble recovery, and a pick this year. Um, I think he'd be a great day two, early day three, fine for Buffalo to boot, bolster their defensive line. Um, so I just wanted to point that out as well. Yeah, I, I like him a lot. I think, yeah, he's definitely going to be a guy that you get day two that can be a big steal. Um, and yeah, I, you said, like you said, he didn't have as much protection as in them. Michigan just because the defense was really good, but he tested pretty well. Um, and, yeah, I really like him a lot. Uh, one more receiver that I want to hit that more than likely will probably be there when um, – probably will more than likely be there rather than A.D. Mitchell would be. And it's a guy that's been talked about a lot with the Bills, and that's Keon Coleman um, from Florida State. He He's kind of a tough one because people – um, obviously, people thought in the combine he was a little disappointing. Um, he ran a a, a four six one forty, which a lot of people thought he would run faster. But then when you looked at his gauntlet drill, he which is where you just run straight line and the ball is just thrown to you from different directions. Um, he hit max speed of twenty miles per hour. So he's one of those guys where. Yes, his 40 speed isn't anything to write home about, but he his on-field speed is really good, which they were comparing that to guys like Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua, who are guys where their 40s don't don't jump off the charts, but once you watch them in game, like they look fast. And he's another guy that is a great jump ball um great jump bar receiver. 6'4, 215. He played basketball. Um, he was really, obviously, uh, really good at, at basketball. Um, but then he had 658 yards, 11 touchdowns with Florida State, and his production was doing really well until Jordan Travis uh, went down with that injury. His production started to kind of go down a little bit, but he's dropped in drafts a lot these past month. And I think um, if the Bills do their due diligence on him and he and he does well in his pro day, and they kind of think that. Um, he could be somebody for them. I I would be all for this pick 
Um, and I, I, that's who I said they should target right after they lost. I said a guy like Keon Coleman fits in perfectly with what I believe they should get. Um, I think he's, a, I think he's a better athlete than obviously the combine showed. I mean, he had a 38 inch vertical and a 10 seven broad jump, which is pretty good. But the real, the real thing was just this 40 time, uh, wasn't great. So that might have dropped them lower. And like, like I said, this wide receiver class is so deep that. Um, you had a lot of guys kind of going up and down, like Xavier Worthy flew up draft boards running the four two one, which hurts Keon Coleman. Like AD Mitchell had a great combine, so there's so many wide receivers, and I think all the three, all the three that we hit could be immediate impact starters for them day one if they're there. Um, and yeah, I think the Bills should definitely target wide receiver at least in the, with their first round pick, just because of how deep this wide receiver class is. And I think Keon Coleman would be a good one for them to to get if he's there. Yeah, they just need to do their due, dil- due diligence and find what guy fits them the best. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, they've got a lot of options because you said this wide, receiver cla- this wide receiver class is one of the deepest that has ever been produced. Um, but, yeah, I think that wide receiver is clearly their biggest need. <laughs> um, they should address it in the draft because there's not a ton of – wide receivers they'll be able to get, but 